Welcome to the Every Day is a New Day podcast and live show. The inspirational show about moving forward and choosing to be more of you. Transmuting the self-doubt and stepping into courageously aligned confidence in who you uniquely are. My name is Kim O'Neill. I'm a twice certified transformational confidence coach, Reiki master, best-selling author, and former crime analyst who now helps empathic heart-centered individuals shatter the noise of self-doubt, find clarity on what self-love really looks like, and the courage to be peacefully grounded in who you've always known you are from the inside out. Join me for the live shows on Facebook and YouTube and visit KimO'NealCoaching.com for more info. Let's get to it. All right. Welcome, everybody. I have another amazing guest here today. Welcome, Ralph Brogdon. It's been a long time. I'm so happy that we could connect. This will be so super. I know. I'm so excited to have you here tonight. I was just telling last week's guest that it, every single week, it's like I have the right guest at the right time and what you do and and just you know who I have learned you to be is you're perfect for tonight. So I'm really, really grateful to be able to share you and, and your expertise with everyone today. So the way I'm gonna do it, Ralph, is I'd like to go ahead and just share everyone with everyone a little bit of your background. So I'm gonna read your bio with everyone and then we'll get into our conversation. Okay. Okay, so for all those just meeting Ralph Brogdon for the very first time, Ralph Brogdon is a best-selling author, publisher, and strategic communication consultant specializing in marketing and media. His clients have been featured on CBS, NBC, ABC, Fox, USA Today, The Huffington Post, and hundreds of nationally syndicated television, newspaper, and magazine outlets. He's a producer for Business Innovators Radio Network and the host of Rebelpreneur Radio for WCKG 102.3 FM in Chicago. He is a former copywriter and marketing strategist for a digital media agency in New York and holds a master's degree in strategic communication from American University in Washington, D.C., and a bachelor's degree in marketing and psychology from the State of University, State University of New York. So you can see that Ralph definitely has a lot under his belt to really uh, serve us today in, in talking about strategic communication and all the different things that center around that. Uh, Ralph, let me just first ask you, you know, how are you seeing your role in what you do um, play a role in what's going on in the world right now? What, what, tell us about the importance and, and, and how it's showing up for you. I think probably, and, and there's lots of ways to look at it, but I think with the challenges that all of us are facing right now in business, uh, in our, our country, around the world. It's a global thing now. Um, I have heard a lot of people complain about the lack of leadership. And that really made me think, well, what is leadership anyway? And it, it occurred to me that it's not the lack of leadership that is the reason why we don't have a solution to the problem. It's the lack of leadership that contributed to the problem. <laughs> so I think for me, it has been a really useful period of time to, to kind of take a step back. And this is how I've been advising my clients. Take a step back and really evaluate who you are. Why are you here? What are the problems that you solve? What's the results that you create? And if necessary, reinvent who you are. Um, really getting deep into your core values, your purpose. And then what I do is once we figure that out is craft the message that helps to explain to other people who you are, what, what are the problems that you solve and what are the results that you deliver? And so I think as challenging as this time is, it's been really useful to take a step back and say, what am I really here for? What's it really all about? What's the purpose and how can I do a better job of showing up, adding value, and being the change that I want in the world and not waiting for someone else to come along and be the leader. You be who it is you're supposed to be in this moment, in this time. And if we all just take that proactive responsibility, 
we'll get through it and we'll come out on the other side better. And not just personally, but I, I think together as a community, as a society, it's important yeah. we all get there together. I love that. And I know your message definitely speaks to um, entrepreneurs and and leaders and, and you know people in the, the business world and things of that nature. I also see how it definitely speaks to anybody who doesn't identify with those titles or those roles. Um, someone who may not be an entrepreneur, someone who, you know, they, they've got their, their job at work, and, but their real life is outside of work. And, and how do you see the importance of, you know, mastering your message and, and knowing how to be strategic with your communication relating even to someone who, who may not see themselves as an entrepreneur? Sure, absolutely. Well, it, it's interesting that you asked that question because I spent the better part of today preparing an in-depth online training webinar that really walks through why it's important that you master your message. And you're right. I do work with a lot of business owners, a lot of entrepreneurs, Rebelpreneur Radio. I'm interviewing business owners primarily. Um, but this idea of mastering your message is much greater than just having a business, doing marketing, doing advertising. Mastering your message is critical because communication is the foundation of every human interaction. So if you are an employee, you need to master your message if you want to get a raise, if you want to add more value, if you want to advance in the company, if you are running or volunteering in a nonprofit organization. You've got to be able to master your message so that you can attract donors, volunteers, corporate sponsors, people who are going to support your cause. If you are in a relationship that's having difficulties, I can almost guarantee that mastering your message will save your marriage or save your relationship. <laughs> Because all you got to do is reverse engineer that, right? right? When people complain about the relationship, it's, well, uh, he never listens to me or she's on my case 24 hours a day. She never stops yakking or, or whatever the complaint is. And so learning to master your message and craft better communication, uh, not only does it, 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 obviously it's proven in marketing and business but in every area of life, you can stop a world war with mastering your message. You can also start World War III by failing to master your message. Uh, you, can, you can do so much good and so much bad by just the words that you say. So what I really try to help people to do is to figure out three things to help them find their voice, to, to master their message, and then share it with the world. And you've got to have all three to be able to make the impact, have the influence, make the impact, and then earn the income that you want to earn. And so for me, communication drives all of that because nothing happens until we communicate with, with each other. And learning to do that better has application in every area of life. One of the things that you said with, at the very beginning was about how getting clear on who you are and how that plays a role in what your message is. And, and it also sounds like it can be reverse engineered about as you're formulating your message, you're also getting clear on who you are. That's actually part of my process. Okay. Um, the, 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 the Roman orator Cato, he was asked how he was able to put together these powerfully persuasive speeches. He says, if you find the message, the words will follow. And my approach is if you find your purpose, the message will follow. And then the message gives you the verbiage. It gives you the vernacular, the vocabulary to be able to express who you are, what you're all about. So part of my process, and I can walk, walk it through, uh, walk through it with you. If, uh, if you, you Yes, that would be excellent. Who, who's up well, for that? Let us know in the chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody somebody say hello, hi there, or something. Um, I'll start with five reasons why 
this is th this foundational work is necessary. And, and this is why, you know, trying to just hire a copywriter who doesn't get you or uh, buying, purchasing templates, fill in the blank stuff to get the words right, but they don't resonate with you. Now, I'll, so I'll, I'll tell you the five reasons why. Uh, we need to master our message. And the number one thing that people complain about is clarity. If you aren't clear, I mean, crystal clear about who you are, what you're here to do, who, who you're here to serve, the problems you solve and the results you deliver for other people, it's hard to lead. It's hard to be persuasive. If you, if you haven't persuaded yourself, you're not going to be able to persuade anyone else. But the first step that I take people through is get really clear. And we go through a whole process of that. Clarity then leads to certainty. See, once you're clear about who you are and where you're going, there is a certainty that really gets down on the inside of you. So the, the message is not just words that come out. It is something, it has to come from the very depth of who you are. You have to really know. And, and if you look at all the gifted communicators in history, and I'm talking about Ronald Reagan, the great communicator, Dr. Martin Luther King, um, Winston Churchill, John F. Kennedy, and so many others, um, they didn't just give a speech they spoke from their heart and they spoke about their beliefs, their passions, vision and values, hopes and dreams for the future. You've to get power, you have to tap into all of that vision and value and purpose so that when you speak, you are speaking from a place that connects very deeply with who you are and with the people that you're talking to. So clarity brings certainty about that. Certainty does what? Gives you confidence. Once you are certain, you get confident. Now, a lot of people, they want to they be reassured from other people that they are okay, that they are acceptable, that they are approved. We're looking for approval everywhere else when really the approval comes from this confidence on the inside based upon clarity and certainty. So the biggest complaint I hear from people is they're afraid. They're not sure if they step out, if they step up, if they speak out, if they put themselves out there, they're not sure that they can really pull it off. They're afraid that they are being an, being an imposter. Right. Is, is that something that you've probably run into in your Absolutely. Coaching as well. Yep. It solves that because once you get clarity and certainty, it has built in confidence and that confidence is contagious. And so to quickly go through it, confidence then leads to consistency. Consistency means you show up, you're principle centered, always giving value, always serving because you are confident. You know that you can solve problems, create results that the audience wants, that your target audience wants. You know who you are. You know why you are on this earth. And that gives you confidence, which leads to consistently showing up, consistently marketing yourself, promoting yourself, not in a self-serving way, but with almost a moral obligation that I have to, I'm compelled to add value because for example, Kim, if I if you had arthritis and if I had a solution to arthritis and you're in pain and I have a solution for that, I have a moral obligation to let you know about the solution that I have and to make that available to you. And to not do that is not serving you. It's leaving you in pain and it is severely limiting the good that I can do for you and for everyone else who has that problem. We've got to get that kind of passion for whatever the, the problem is that you solve. And that consistency leads to the final thing, clients, customers, constituents. If you're trying to run for election, 
um, contributors, if you're trying to build your nonprofit, it attracts people to you. They will follow you. They will buy your stuff. They will promote you. They will follow you to the ends of the earth and they will seek you out from the ends of the earth. If you master your message and make that passionate connection with people right where they are, because so few people do that. Yeah. I, I totally, I totally hear what you're saying. And, um, I can tell for for people who may not be in an entrepreneurial space, it might be a little confusing. It might sound like um, some of these things are repeat um, types of things. And uh, but from an entrepreneurial standpoint, I, I totally see the the difference of what you're talking about with the clarity. And I think the next one was certainty. It's it's kind of like getting to these deeper layers of really feeling rooted in the message, so that you know that when you share it you're unshakable, that regardless of other people agree or don't agree, um, your message still stands. And really what comes up for me, um, you know, when I start to look at it that way, is this whole piece about authenticity. Because to be able to speak from our hearts, we have to be able to be able to be, you know, not only clear, but be authentic. Know what is in our heart? What is that truest message? And sometimes when we start to uncover those things. We find you know, things that maybe it's like, oh, wait, do I actually believe that anymore? Maybe have been true at one time, but now not so much. And so it's like, as you're getting deeper and deeper into what is, who am I? What is my clarity? What is true and authentic for me? You might start to find there's some stuff to weed out first. So I just wanted to point that out because that was really showing up for me as you were speaking. What what thoughts do you want to add in terms of just authenticity? Because that can be a a really um, scary thing for a lot of people when they're starting to step into a more authentic space. Sure. And that's why it's so important just to really get this foundation. It's hard to lead people in, in a direction that you're not sure about yourself. But right. Once you're sure of the direction, then you're able to point other people. So people are looking to you in terms of leadership. They want a roadmap. They want to know how to get from where they are to where they want to be. And you can't lead anyone to a place you've never been to. So all of that is part of this authenticity. Authenticity. Also, I think telling your story um, that you don't have it all together and that you're still learning and you're still growing. And there's lots of things you don't know, but here's what I do know. And then you go back to your message. I know this, this, and this. And if it's just those three things that you keep hammering over and over again, that creates consistency and momentum in your message. And it, it, acknowledges that you're a human and you're still learning and that resonates with people as well. Um, so I, I would just encourage people step out and don't be afraid because the world needs you. The world needs your voice. And we don't, I always say we don't, we do not need echoes. We need voices. And there's too many people speaking to authenticity, trying to be the best imitation of their favorite guru their favorite motivational speaker. And we all have probably imitated the people that we admire. But at some point, you've got to say, I got to be who I am. And if that looks like somebody else, or if it doesn't, I'm going to give my voice, my message, my uniqueness, my gift to the world, because no one else has your combination of experience, education, um, hardships, failures, mistakes. That's a unique DNA that is who you are. Even your very point of view has value. So the trick is taking that value and communicating it to people in a way that it resonates and gets them to, to take action. What do you think about messages when, when someone's choosing to, to step out there and, you know, be authentic, be rooted in their message, and they have a moment of, of uh oh, I, you know, I, I said something I didn't mean to say, or I now, now that I rethink that, you know, I, I would love to change it. And, you know, what about those messages that actually you maybe thought hit the mark at one point and then you come back and you go, uh oh, what yeah. do you, do, what do you do at that point? Well, it, you do like Obama did. My, my thoughts have evolved on that. <laughs> so ah. you have those moments where you say, you know, my thoughts have evolved in, in that I used to believe this. Now I, be now I believe this. And so it's, it's perfectly acceptable to 
and, and again, back to authenticity to be genuine and be honest enough to say, you know, I used to, and th this was part of my story. I spent 20 years in marketing and I got burned out in marketing <laughs> and I was doing this for a living and didn't know what else to do. And I had to go back and figure the purpose of what marketing is. And I found the purpose in strategic communication and that, that allowed me to kind of shift. So my thinking evolved and we don't think the same and believe the same today as what we did 10 years ago, five years ago. We get new distinctions. If we're growing, we learn new things. And so part of the function of this is to be able to go to your clients, to your prospects, to your leads, uh, to your circle of influence. And so, you know, I had a revelation the other day and this is what happened and this is where I was failing. And then I had a revelation. I had an insight. I made a new distinction that I want to share with you. And then, so you take your failure and you use it for fuel to be able to empower other people. And so mastering your message is a process. You, you'd never craft it, chisel it in stone, and then send it out to the world. It's a constant, never ending improvement. And just like with marketing and advertising, you test because you don't know what's going to resonate. You speak from your heart and you find new and better ways to get your point across. It's a work in progress. I, I, yeah, I love that you say that. And I just want to say for anybody who's looking for those right words, if you find yourself in that moment of saying, uh-oh, I said this and actually now, you know, my thoughts have evolved, right? Ralph just gave great example of like, you know, in addition to that phrase, you actually gave a really nice example um, of a whole way that someone could start a new conversation that's a little different than, from whatever the first one was. So I would just say, go back and watch this again, write down what he said, um, just to get yourself started, you know, but, but the other thing I hear is that if you find yourself in that place of saying, uh oh, I think something different now. That's also being in an authentic space. No one ever said we couldn't change our mind. No one ever said we couldn't, you know, we had to stay one course for our entire life. And so that authenticity is what really keeps that door open. So we can continue to, okay, I'm going to move forward and my message comes with me and my message moves forward too. So I just want to point out that part. Just because the message changes doesn't mean you're no longer authentic. The That's right. The and act actually of action. authenticity. It's a sign that you're growing. And yes. if you're not growing, then the message is going to stay the same. But it's yeah. an opportunity to then go back to all of your existing clients, your former clients, and say, here's the new things I'm learning. Here's the new things I'm doing. Here's new value that I'm creating. And so you can reactivate all of those old relationships with new insights, fresh discoveries, new value. And also you're responding to circumstances. I don't think that anyone could have uh, predicted that we would be in a global pandemic lockdown for several months. And we still don't know where it's all going to end up. Uh, so some things you don't have control over and you just respond to things as best that you can. But having said that, once you've once you have mastered your message in terms of what do you stand for? What are your principles? What are your values? Those probably will not change a whole lot. So if your value, for example, is showing up and serving other people, you're probably not going to change that value unless you get burned out. And then that's not a good change. That's a negative change. So it's finding out who and what motivates you and the, the principles that you're going to base your life and your business on. And those bedrock principles usually stay the same. That's your personal constitution. What you stand for, you're planting your flag here. And so balancing that with the fact that you're learning and growing and responding to things in life. I, I think that's a great way to look at it and, and to be very flexible in, in your messaging and how you relate to people. Yes, yes, yes. So those who are with us, let us know if the, how this is resonating for you and what questions are coming up. Um, Ralph, when we put this out there online, um, I actually at first, you know, said uh, something about we're going to talk about mastering your message. And then I actually love the way that you phrase it. You said we're going to talk about positive action towards uh, moving forward with, you know, our in our life, our business and our messages. And we've already been talking about that positive action with the steps that you gave. Um, but is there anything else that comes up for you when you think of it in those terms about positive action 
towards moving forward in life and business and our messages? Sure. Well, one of the earliest influences on me was Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I read that when I was in my early 20s, and it has shaped everything that I've done ever since. Um, one of those habits is to be proactive. And that's why I say, you know, we don't wait for permission to master our message or, or find our voice or speak it out to the world. We don't wait for permission. We don't wait for licensing. You know, in Rebelpreneur, the way I teach it is start with what you have and be proactive. So you start with what you have. You don't need financing. You don't need supporters. You don't need permission. You don't need licensing. You don't need any more credentials. You probably have plenty of credentials. You have more than enough credentials and licensing and training. Just get out there, get started with, with what you have and take the risk. Because I think once you do that and you're authentic and you engage people in a real way, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at the positive response when you really focus your message and your service on adding value and helping other people get what they want. Because really human nature is such, they don't care about your product or your service. They only care about two things, a problem they have and don't want, or a result they want and don't have. And you could apply that to anything that's going on in the news, anything going on in your life, anything going on in the community. And that's what people care about. Problems they have that they don't want and results that they want that they don't have. If you can figure out how to deliver those problems and how to create those results for people, they're going to love you. But see, it takes a little bit of time to get to know, well, what am I good at? What am I passionate about? Where's my gift? Where's my skill set? What's my purpose? What's my mission? So that's why I spend so much time with people on that, because then the message flows from that and it resonates with people and you get the results that you're looking for without trying to manipulate and be salesy and, and all of the other stuff that um, is just we're tired of and uh, doesn't really respond. Uh, I think the more and more response to the old way of marketing is just becoming more and more diminished. I Less am glad it's, it's, you've got to find a new way to connect with people. And in my experience, the greatest leverage point you have is to master your message because then it's not about the marketing anymore. It's about the message. The marketing is just a delivery mechanism for your message. We all have the same tools. We all have the same resources and basically marketing as a science is not that complicated. So why is it that some people get amazing results and others with the same tools don't get amazing results? What's the difference? Well, in my experience and in my education and study, the difference is in the message, not the marketing. It's the messaging that the marketing delivers. Uh, so these are just some of the distinctions I think will really take people to a place beyond where they were going into this difficult time, coming out and emerging much stronger and much better able and equipped to serve other people. I was only smiling and smirking and laughing because I love how you make all of this so simple because it can seem so confusing. I totally get that. And the marketing thing for me has been something at times that's just been like mind boggling. Um, and I just want to say, so for anybody who wants an example of, you know, one of the services that Ralph provides, um, he creates these amazing press releases and he created one for me about four years ago. You still do that, correct, Ralph? Is, yeah. Is, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he creates ama amazing press releases and he created one for me about four years ago. And I actually have um, a copy and some, uh, a, co a copy of the press release along with snippets of different media outlets where it appeared in on my website. So if you want to check that out, you can go to kimoneilcoaching.com and then click on the media kit tab, scroll down and you'll see um, elements there of what he created. And I was blown away, Ralph. I mean, we had only interacted a few times and you, I mean, you asked all the right questions. You got all the, the information out of me and, um, and thank you for allowing me to also, you know, 
you know, once you did the first draft and I gave some added input, oh, can we tweak this or that? Um, and then I thought, oh gosh, I don't know if that's gonna be enough, but you blew me away with what you came back with. I like the final piece was like, he is spot on. He totally got me and it it was just amazing. So anyway, he's really good at what he does. <laughs> Um, uh, so Ralph, there was something you said a moment ago about, um, about each of us took it a little bit away from the entrepreneurial aspect again, um, ah, about the whole finding our voice piece. Hmm. Will you speak to that a little bit, um, just a little bit more, because I know right now in this time, so many people are in the process of finding their voice and it feels like a sloppy, scary process. And we've been talking about that in terms of writing, but you know, it also comes across with our speaking and, and just all of it. So let's talk about that specifically, the, the voice. Sure. Sure. Well, I mean, the, the, the process of finding your voice, first of all, um, it assumes it makes a it makes a, a big assumption. And the assumption, the belief that I have is that everyone has a voice, meaning everyone has a story and everyone deserves to be heard. So going back to the example of doing the news release for you, Kim, you have a tremendous story. So it's no great skill of mine just to ask a few questions, pull that story out and just put it together and package it in a way that other people can appreciate who you are, what you do, where you've come from and how you add value to the world. And that's really all you're doing. And the challenge is it's difficult for people to see that in themselves. Yes. So keep going. <laughs> it's so difficult. It, it, it's like, it's like giving yourself a haircut, right? You can do it, but it's probably not going to look great. And it's, it's not going to turn out the way you wanted it to. So recognizing that everyone has a voice, but also recognizing that it's very, very difficult for you to truly appreciate the value that you bring to the world. Most people can't do that for themselves. And so what does that look like? It means they don't take full advantage of all the opportunities that they could to make a difference, to network, to create products and services that will create transformation in people's lives. It also means they sell themselves short. They settle for much less than they should in life, in business, in relationships, in their career, personal, professional development. If they are in business, they tend to devalue themselves down to a commodity where they're charging $25 an hour, $100 mm -hmm. per session, giving away their stuff for next to nothing, because they haven't taken the time to fully appreciate who they are. So part of this process of finding your voice is let's find your value. Let's really dig into, and like I said with you, Kim, it's easy because you've got that story, but it's hard to write your own story. And that's yeah. why you need someone to come along and say, what you're doing is valuable. You have gifts, everyone listening to me right now, you have gifts, you have skills, you have education, experience, you have hopes and dreams and wishes, you have a plethora of things that you know, so much so that you take it all for granted. You don't denominate it, you don't label it, you don't package it, you don't articulate it, you don't use it in a way that helps other people make the connections and until you do that, until you find your voice, you can't share and you can't share it with the world. So my process is threefold, find your voice, master your message and share it with the world. And what I find is a lot of people are out there sharing it with the world and they haven't mastered it yet. <laughs> what does, what does master it look like? Can we like break that down into some nuts and bolts? 
Well, we can. The, the, I, I want to keep it simple for people. And, and the, the process is not as really not as simple as I make it sound or just everyone would would just automatically do it. But I think it comes down to two things. First is the story of me. And then there's the story of we. So the story of me is here's who I am. Here's my hero's journey. You know, I, I was born in a log cabin and I walked you know, <laughs> three miles to school in the snow uphill both ways. You know, you're, you're telling your hero's journey. And then and then one day I made this this wonderful, amazing discovery. And what I discovered changed my life. And then you share that discovery. Now, what happens when you are mastering, you're, you're trying to trying to create this message with people. What I find is that a lot of people, they get stuck in the story of me. And it's all about them. And they never make that transition over to the story of we. You have to bring other people into this story. And you do that by transitioning into my story, then becomes your story. My struggle is your struggle. The things that I struggle with, you're struggling with them too. Now, the difference is that I have overcome. I found the secret. I've got the secret sauce. I found the formula. I created the service of the product to solve that problem that you're struggling with. And now I want to help you and bring you to where you can overcome this just as I have. That's kind of a, of a bird's eye view. There's, there's other ways, specific ways you do that building in narrative persuasion, storytelling elements, um, your your signature phrase, your framework is so important. You know, if Stephen Covey, I, I still go back to Stephen. If he had written a book the way most people tend to write books, and I've, I've written many books and I've published many books, but the way most people write books, if Stephen Covey had said, here is some great management tips that I have accumulated from all these different sources and I'm just going to put them together into this book randomly and read it. And I hope that you enjoy it. And it's just a, a big collection of all kinds of stuff. This book would not have sold millions and millions of copies. It would have even sold a hundred copies. But by taking all of that amorphous information and putting it into a framework, all of a sudden he's mastered his message. And what was that framework? the seven habits of highly effective people. So all of his research, all of his data has meaning within this context of a framework. Now, anybody can do that. It doesn't have to be seven habits. It can be three steps. It could be the four principles. It could be the six things, but somehow, some way you've got to organize all of this stuff into something, into little bite-sized packages that people can take and get and say, hmm, yeah, that makes sense. And it's bite size. So then you just tailor the message to fit the medium. But once you have your framework, Kim, you can go on the Today Show with basically the same talk as going live on Facebook or doing a TEDx or doing a sales call or a webinar. It, you just modify it to fit the time and the, and the medium, but your framework remains solid. And again, that gives you confidence. At a minute's notice, notice you can go out and you can begin to talk about your framework, seven habits, four agreements, whatever. And that gives you power and consistency with lots of different media, lots of different audiences. So what, what, some of, the, of the elements. What I hear is that the framework is most likely going to be unique to each individual person, and the more and more they get clear on what their message is, they can start to weed out what, what is really clouding the framework so that you can start to see the patterns and how it would fit into a seven steps or a three this or whatever it might be. Yeah. Does that yeah. resonate? And it may be something that you're already doing. It may be something that um, someone else like myself could look at and say, well, here's where your framework is. You think it's this, uh -huh. but here's what it is. This is what's going to resonate. 
Um, just like I had to sit down with master your message and figure out what are the five elements that really take someone from zero to hero, <laughs> you know, where okay. I, don't know, I don't know anything. I don't know my value. I don't. I, and, and so the five things are mindset, mission and movement, message, marketing and media. Those are the five steps. Now, within that framework of master your message, there's a lot of sub steps and a lot of work that we have to do. And it's fun and it's enjoyable. But one thing about frameworks is it gives people a roadmap to follow. No matter where you are, you start at step one and then you finish on step five. And what you have to do is figure out what's your version of that. What do you do with people who come to you and pay you money to say, solve my problem? And they are at step one. How do you get them to step five? Step one, step two, three, four, five. And maybe your process has six. Maybe it has seven, maybe it has eight or 12. I don't know. But that is something that you figure out in advance. You you create the map that you want to follow people or that you want people to follow. And so there's great power there when you're the one that's leading them. And so this is how you lead with your message and help people get the results that they want. I'll, I'll briefly say one more thing. Yeah. I work with brilliant people. And because I'm a brilliant person, yes, by, you are. Brilliant, by brilliant, what I mean is, I just mean creative is all I mean. <laughs> creative people, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial mindsets, we tend to have 50 projects going on. We've started 10 different businesses and we've got so many things going on. So in a list of ideas twice as long that we haven't implemented. So in working with brilliant people, creative people, very gifted and talented people, what I have found is they're really brilliant at whatever it is that they do. They're not necessarily brilliant at explaining <laughs> what they do to other people or to take all of that information and basically dumb it down, simplify it down so that people could follow. Yeah. I used to do seminars that were all day long from eight in the morning till five in the afternoon. And it was just one long fire drinking from the fire hose. I've got the fire hose and they're drinking from it. And at the end of that, because I, I wanted them to get value, but the challenge is they got so much all at once. They are exhausted at the end of the day. Oh. I could move to three days later because I'm wore out and exhausted. So we've got to take all of that wonderful, brilliant stuff and figure out how to package it in little doses so that people can take it and actually do something productive with it. So that's another great benefit. You get better results with people once you master your message and you create these frameworks. Um, so that's, that's what I do for people. I, I'm working with someone right now who is uh, English as a second language. Um, English was their second language. And um, everything you've said to me you know, relates for someone who's who's had that experience. But I'm just curious if um, there's anything else that comes up for you that would relate or be helpful for someone who, you know, may feel not as confident in speaking English, but still has that desire to get their message out and and use their voice. Um, is there anything else that comes up when you think of, of people who have English as a second language? Hmm. That's an interesting question. And it's a good question because I, I just said, hey, everybody's got a story. Everybody deserves to have their voice heard. So what do you do when you don't speak English? Uh, well, I think you start by mastering your message in whatever your native tongue is, <laughs> right? Uh, I would start there. And then um, and then once you've got your framework, you can translate it. And just to reverse engineer this, when I write a book, I only speak one language. I know bits and pieces of Spanish, but I'm, you know, I, I can ask, you know, directions uh, to the bathroom and, and that sort of thing, you know, table for four, um, you know, uh, where's the, donde estacion de policia, you know, where's the police station? I, I, I do the basics, right? But when I write a book, I write it in my native language. And then when it resonates with bilingual people, they say, hey, can I translate that into Spanish? Hey, can I translate this into French? Can I translate? So that's beautiful. Um, yeah, I, I would say 
master your message, master your message in your native tongue. And once that resonates with people, you'll find people are eager once they are touched by your message, they'll translate that into a different language. So you, you'll find it, the, the, the way will open up for you once you, once you do this. I think that's great. That's, that's, that makes a lot of sense too. So Ralph, I want to ask you, was there ever a time when, when you felt that you, you know, lacked some confidence in your message and where it didn't come as easily for you as it does today? Well, yeah, well, just a few minutes ago, you know, Darcy says, I'm sorry to say, but this guy is talking in circles. <laughs> so, so much for mastering your message. All right. I hear you, Darcy. Thanks for the feedback. I really appreciate that. But see, I have confidence that even if my style is not to somebody's liking, I'm not going to get upset and, and stop. I'm just going to get better and better. I think I'm doing pretty good for someone who is half deaf in their left ear and I'm running a radio show. Uh, so <laughs> my, my philosophy and my approach to life is to make the best opportunity of everything that you've got. Was there ever a time? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, sometimes every day I have to overcome this idea that I don't know what I'm talking about. And I'm, I'm educated well beyond um, my level of where you would think that by now I would never have those doubts, but I think those doubts are healthy because to me, it's a signal that says, how can I get better? How can I improve? How can I add value? Even when I'm working with a client and I don't, and I'll be honest, I don't always get the result that I want with the client. Does anybody, is anybody a hundred percent? But what that does for me is say, well, how can I get the result for the client next time? What can I do? How can I add value? How can I continuously improve and get better and better? And I just think that's, that's how you approach that. You don't let uh, negative thoughts from outside or from inside steer you in any kind of, of direction, but absolutely it's normal. It's normal to have doubts. Absolutely. And, plus we live in a culture where everyone's a critic. So you do have to have a thick skin. And you do have to realize everyone is not going to resonate with your message. Everyone's not going to buy your stuff. Everybody's not going to hire you. You're not going to get every job you apply for. You're not going to get every program that you try to get into. Um, you're not, you're just not, but you consistently show up and you put yourself out there. And when you have proven yourself over and over and over again, I don't want to say the universe works it out. I just would say that hard work is rewarded and you get yeah. better, at, better at what you do. So Ralph, on that note, I, I actually, I understood everything you were saying when you were talking about your process and everything earlier. And I think that's just it. And this was a beautiful moment. So Darcy, thank you for actually commenting about how this mes message was resonating or not resonating with you because that's just it. Everything we say, no matter how clear we are on it, is subjective and not everybody is going to resonate. And this, what you described as, as far as your process of helping someone master their message is very similar to my process of helping someone prepare for job interviews or podcast wow. interviews. It's yeah. we, we look at what are we working with and then we distill it down and we get clearer and clearer and clearer till that person goes, yeah, this is me and this is what I want to say. And knowing that you may still not get the job. Of course, that's we do all that work to get the job, to, you know, to deliver that message and make that connection with that person on the other side and knowing you can always only do so much. So the, the most, you know, that you can, the more that you can prepare and really make sure that you're in alignment with what you're sharing and what you're doing, you're, you're sending that energy out there and inevitably it's going to come back to you just as you're intending for it to, whether it be at that interview or, you know, whoever you're speaking to or the next person, the key is doing that preparation work so that, um, you know, you can aim for the highest optimal uh, outcome possible and yet know that it's not always going to land. So. And, and I would add to that. That's very good. What you just said, building upon that, if you do this right, 
you are going to turn off people just as you will turn on people by what you say and how you do your point of view, your philosophy, the way you approach things. If it's not pushing some people away, then it's not speaking to a big enough per, uh, audience. So the very ones that you attract are, are going to be the opposite response to the ones that you don't want to work with anyway. Yeah. My style, my philosophy, my approach doesn't resonate with everybody. And that's OK, because I'm not trying to reach everybody. I'm trying to reach as many as I can reach with my message and my approach. But uh, we live in a great big world of something like seven billion people. And there's no way that we can reach every single person and get them to think and believe and act and behave the way we want them to in agreement with us. But when you do this right, what you're doing is you're sending out a call, a, a trumpet that gets the people who resonate with this. They, re, you know, everyone doesn't like Howard Stern. Some to the ones who love Howard Stern, he's the greatest and they listen to him religiously. But if he's not your thing, you don't listen and yeah. he's fine with that. And he says that I don't want you. You know, I'm not I'm not creating a radio show that everybody likes. I'll be out of business if I do that. Same thing with mastering your message. Be true to yourself. And then the people that you are supposed to be connected with will be attracted. I, I tend to say it's more of an art than a science. And yet the science part is where it shows up in the framework and all that stuff that you talked about earlier, which absolutely supports the art of it. But, it, you know, yeah, it's it's not going to resonate with everybody. So. Anyway, Darcy, I hope you know we do appreciate your comment here because this was an excellent portion to our conversation. I really appreciate that. Yeah. And Ralph, we are nearing the end of our conversation, but I'm just, you know, what are you working on today? And what would you like to leave our audience with? Um, and where can they connect with you? Well, I, I would just leave you with the idea that um, everyone has a voice. Yeah. You owe it to yourself to figure out who you are, figure out what your voice is master your message and share it with the world. I believe you have a moral and ethical obligation to let your brilliance out there and make a difference. You have no right to complain if you're not making a difference. I also believe that you can make money while you are making a difference. So part of what I train people to do is how to monetize their message. So they're not just giving away their stuff for free all the time and then wondering why they don't get the results that they want. So um, I put actually put together a training that people can take advantage of. If they just go to my website, they'll see a big button for the free training. And that walks you through this process um, in, in great detail. And that's at ralphbrogdon.com, correct? That's right. You got it. Okay. And so just going to spell that for our audio only listeners. R-A-L-P-H-B as in boy, R-O-G-D as in David. E N Ralph Brogden. Okay. Dot com. <laughs> Very well done. Hey, you, you could get a radio announcer job. Hey, you don't keep me in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, Ralph. Ralph, thank you so much for sharing everything you did. I mean, I'm I'm actually like, whoa, I want to listen to this again because you gave us some really concrete core steps that we can all, again, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're not an entrepreneur and you're simply looking to gain clarity on your message, whether that be, I'm going to actually say, you know, whether that be, sure, maybe you're wanting to um, use your voice more at work. Maybe you're wanting to um, clarify your message as an entrepreneur on some sort of social media platform. Or even if you're simply trying to craft your thoughts and your precise message and having that difficult conversation with people in your life, if that is something that, you know, is, is showing up for you. So um, those are great steps. I love all of them. And um, just thank you so much, Ralph. I appreciate you sharing all that you did today. Oh, thank you. It, it was really a pleasure. Lots of fun. Great to connect with you. And like, wow, you have been, you have blown up since the last time. Yeah, I mean, you've just you're gone. You're like. What? What is this? Hollywood Kim O'Neill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I, I, I really appreciate that. And um, yeah, it was great to connect with you too. And so again, so one of the things Ralph also does is amazing press releases. And you can check out mine that he did on kimoneillcoaching.com. Click on the media kit tab, scroll down about halfway, you'll see it. Um, and, and there we have it. So Ralph, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. It was, it was a real joy.
Absolutely. Likewise. And thank you to everybody who was with us, whether you were live or on the replay. Let us know what you're taking away from today's conversation. How is mastering your message showing up in your life? And what comes to mind when you think about how can I make, you know, take positive forward action with my message? Um, you know, how is that going to parlay into positive forward action in your, your business, you know, in your personal life? How do all those components come together? Let us know. And remember, every day is always a new day. Every day, every day, every moment, every second, every, every, everything. There's always a choice in that moment to flip the switch and say, okay, we're going to, you know, dive deeper and, you know, be, be more authentic and say, Hey, you know what? My message has evolved. I have evolved. I choose to have a different thought and move forward from that place. And you can find a lot of ease and find the space to even feel comfortable in moving forward when you start to make those little flips in your mind. So with that said, have an amazing day, everybody. Um, Ralph, stay right there. And I will see you all again next week for another episode of Every Day is a New Day Show right here on Facebook. See you then. Bye, everybody. And that's today's show. So what are you taking away? Let me know down in the comments wherever you listened or watched today's episode and connect with me on Facebook on the Every Day is a New Day show and coaching page or visit KimO'NealCoaching.com for more info. Remember, every day is always a new day. Wherever you are today does not have to be where you are tomorrow. There is always hope and you will always be amazing. I'll see you next time.